The PAP must treat Singaporeans like human beings. Now, if you think that this statement is the usual criticism of the PAP by the opposition, you are wrong. These words were uttered by none other than a former PAP minister. Hi everyone, it's good to talk to you again. I'll come back to this point later. For now, I want to tell you about the exciting pre-election rally that the SDP is organising called Shake It Up on 19th October, starting at 4pm at Hongland Park. Come and join us. I'll leave you in absolutely no doubt by the end of this video how you can make the PAP treat you like human beings and why it's so important that you support an opposition like the SDP in this coming general elections. I'll do this by contrasting the developments that took place after GE 2011 versus those after GE 2015. And when the PAP's vote share came down to 60% in the 2011 elections and they lost six seats, Unimpressive ministers like Raymond Lim, who could not rectify the problems with the MRT system, Wong Kan Seng, who couldn't defend the security lapse that allowed suspected terrorist Masalama to escape, and Mao Baotan, who made a complete mess of the HDB flat supply, all Kwai Kwai stepped down from the cabinet. Two, Mr Go Chok Tong also resigned from the cabinet, thus ending taxpayers having to pay him enormous sums of money for holding a post many thought was unnecessary. In addition, ministerial salaries were also cut to placate the people's anger. Three, the PAP agreed to tighten immigration and add more buses to the public transport network. It also upped social spending and came up with measures like MediShield Life and the Pioneer Generation Package. Four, PM Lee Shenlong even apologised to Singaporeans, twice, and pledged to do better. If we didn't get it right, he said, I'm sorry, but we will try better the next time. And finally, as I stated at the beginning, Mr Giorgio, former minister who lost the seat, admitted that the PAP needed to change and treat citizens as human beings. Now, I hope you realise the significance of this statement. It is a damning admission by a PAP minister that his party has not been treating the people like human beings. Remember, all this apologising, stepping down, cutting of salaries, calling for their party to change and to treat Singaporeans like human beings, all this took place when the PAP lost a few seats at the 2011 election. Now let's take a look at what happened after the GE in 2015 when the PAP's vote share went up to 70%. 1. Within the first few months after the elections, the PAP started to raise prices for a series of items, 16 in all, starting with car park rates going up by 27%. Now, this was followed by hikes of the water tax, town council fees, electricity and gas rates, school fees, bus and MRT fees, internet fees, and the list goes on and on. To cap it off, they arrogantly tell you that they are going to increase the GST to 9% after the next GE. Now, all these increases came despite Mr. Tharman promising us before the 2015 elections that whatever increased spending planned for the rest of this decade is sufficiently provided for by measures that the government had already undertaken. I repeat, had already undertaken. Two, Health Minister Gan Kim Yong remains in his post even after repeated debacles like the Hepatitis C outbreak, which killed eight patients and infected many more. The Zika explosion, the continued shortage of hospital beds, the breach in Singhal's cyber security system where 1.4 million patient records were stolen. Compare this to Wong Kan Seng, Raymond Lim and Ma Bao Tan having to step down after 2011 when its percentage of votes came down. 3. After 2015, when you give PAP your votes, Mr Go Chok Tong said that the ministers are not paid enough. A young minister like Mr Edwin Tong chimed in and said that his 50000 a month salary is not sufficient. They didn't dare to say this after the results in the 2011 GE. 4. Remember when the PAP said it would reduce the flow of foreigners into the country after the 2011 elections? Now Mr Heng Sui Kiet wants to bring in more foreigners to increase our population to 10 million. Why? Because after the 2015 GE, when it got such a high vote share, the PAP feels that it can do as it pleases. 5. The government introduced MediShield Life and Pioneer Generation Package after 2011. But after the 2015 elections, when you increase its vote percentage, it insisted that taxes will have to be increased to fund these programs. Do you see the pattern, my friends? When you give the PAP a high percentage of votes, it does as it pleases and doesn't treat you, as what Mr Giorgio said, 
as human beings. The ministers make policies that benefit themselves rather than the citizens. Are you surprised? When you give someone a blank check, do you blame him for cashing it for the maximum amount? On the other hand, when you vote in more opposition MPs, the PAP listens to you and moderates its behaviour and cuts back on its successes. Don't, don't take it from me. This is what the late Dr. To Chin Chai, the founding chairman of the PAP, said. When the PAP and the opposition were 26 to 25, the government was sensitive to issues and was circumspect. When you've got a strong opposition, there's consultation. Now let me make this very clear for you. The SDP is focusing on three issues this coming GE. We're asking the people to, one, say no to the increase of GST to 9% and to bring down the other unnecessary increases in prices. Two, say no to the government cramming in 10 million people onto this island. And three, say no to the withholding of our CPF savings through the minimum sum scheme. Now, if you send our candidates into parliament, what message do you think the PAP will hear? Then think of its reaction to the 2011 GE results and Dr. To Chin Chai's words. Do you think it will be so bold as to ignore your clear message and not be more sensitive to you and think twice about raising the GST and other taxes or increasing our population to 10 million and flooding Singapore with foreign PMETs to unfairly compete with us for jobs or to continue withholding our CPF savings? The reality, my fellow Singaporeans, is that you cannot trust the PAP to carry out its promises without a strong opposition in Parliament. Now, I don't say this lightly. I will back up what I say by giving you hard evidence, facts, in black and white, why you can't trust them. I'll do this at our Shake It Up rally at Hong Lim Park on 19th October. Come down and hear for yourselves. And let's really shake things up and make the situation for ourselves and our children better. Remember, 19th October at Hong Lim Park, I've got a date with you. In the meantime, pass this video around. There isn't much time left before the GE and you and I, we have got to get the word out to all Singaporeans, urgently. I'll see you on 19th October, okay? In the meantime, take care. My best wishes to you and your loved ones.